Oh yeah, go on, click the subscribe button. We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad. And, you know, it's time for to stop Japan before we lose this friggin' planet. I don't need no computer in front of me, um, but I will. I'm just saying we need, we need to stop Japan. You can't keep hemorrhaging into the ocean like St. Paddy's Day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, 1,440 minutes a day, a thousand pounds. Think about a thousand pounds a die going into a river for St. Paddy's Day and the river turns bright. Imagine that every minute, 1,440 minutes a day. They never stop. There's a truck every minute. 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 Every minute there's a truck for 1,140 days or so. Say over 1,100 days straight, 1,440 minutes a day, hemorrhaging into the ocean, but it's invisible and you can't see it or smell it or feel it or taste it or hear it or paint pictures of it, so to speak. De debatable because your mind can paint pictures. But if it was like St. Paddy's Day where you could actually see it, right, where it had a color, we wouldn't have this debate. Obviously, right now, we wouldn't have these conversations because everybody would be able to put the pressure on the system and the system would get it. But the system doesn't uh, allow you to, to understand what I'm saying to you. And, and so if you're hearing this, you're lucky because I'm telling you the truth. And uh, it's well vetted. And it could easily be 600 to 1,000 tons a day of highly radioactive materials. Water ran over um, fission products cores, rods, parts of the rods, the neutrons, the x-rays, the hot rods. Rods were uh, exploded out into the ocean as the tsunami was still coming back out. These places detonated. Uh, there was three melted reactors at Fukushima. This is very grave. This is very serious. This is not a joke. I'm not uh, here because I want to be. I'm here because i got no choice. And in that sense, I want to be. Because I want to make sure that you get a real narrative so you can make up your own mind. So you actually have a different narrative than the, the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution indoctrination machine, which is where you're going to get everywhere you go, where uh, Fukushima radiation, they say, well, there's no way you can get over here. But I'll tell you, the EPA has now included cesium-137, a man-made radioactive ionized particles and isotopes as a standard in your drinking water at 7400 becquerels a cubic meter you um, you this is cumulative this is cumulative and so you keep uh, you can't get rid of it it sequesters in your body and your body attacks it and causes tumors and because you're eating GMO um, it's really hard for you to uh, fight off these tumors and these autoimmune deficiencies. And so you have to learn to stop eating GMOs. And uh, almost 100% of your corner shops are GMO, if not 100%. And at least 80% or better, if not all of it, is certainly contaminated in your grocery shops with a man-made creature that poses as, f as food. And it's a war crime, and it's crimes against humanity, and crimes against the planet th that GMO even exists. It's an outrageous crime. They, what they done was they took food and the basis of the what we eat in our foods and they engineered all the potassium. They left little tiny parts per million. And they engineered almost all of the magnesium and the calcium. You know, the reason you're eating the food out of it. And they replaced it very, into the very DNA of it with uh, dioxins and toxins and there was five in particular but two in particular the glossophates and the formaldehydes stop you from uptaking nutrients and you can't fight off these autoimmune deficiency and cancers that are uh, you can't avoid it because there was such a big release from Fukushima not counting everywhere else 
I don't really, you know, I care about everywhere else. I include everywhere else. I talk about everywhere else. But tonight, I just want you to think about there's three melter reactors that have never, we've never seen anything like that on our planet. Let, not one full 100% meltdown that we know about. And I cover a lot of that. Um, and so this is right on the ocean. And these reactors detonated, and there was a fourth one that detonated. And altogether uh, in uh, Japan, there was 14 reactors at least, minimum, and up to 17, 18 reactors that were, you know, uh, couldn't go into a cold shutdown because of the tsunami and the earthquake. And a number of these reactors outside of Fukushima, uh, the Yachi military industrial complexes, directed energy, weapons, isotope production facilities, because that's what they use. Nuclear power is all about making isotopes for directed energy weapons. It's got nothing to do with power. Power is a byproduct of nuclear f uh, fusion or fission, and, you know, nuclear power plants is, that's a, that's a misnomer. It's not a power plant. That's what he told you, but it's all about making uh, radioactive isotopes. And, you know, years ago, they were using just regular, uh, if you want to call it regular, nuclear fuel to make energy, and everything was fine. And now they make 3,100 isotopes, and none of these makes uh, making electricity any better. All of these, in fact, you have to, it's a way more risky to produce. And you're not producing them, you know, so you can make electricity. You're not producing, they shouldn't be on the planet anyway, because they don't even exist, these particular elements. These are man-made elements, so isotopes. And they don't exist on our planet. They're not supposed to be on our planet. They don't exist on the moon. The, the sun doesn't make these types well, we're not making elements. We're destroying elements. The sun creates elements. <coughs> Ooh. And so what we're doing it goes against the very laws of nature, period. It shouldn't be happening. As a society, if we were smart enough to do it, we should have been smart enough to know that that is wrong beyond imagination. And that there is no life on this planet they can deal with ionized man-made radiation. There's, there is no life on here, not even a cockroach, even though he, he fears much better. And some creatures will do better in a radioactive environment, man-made radioactive environment, so they claim. You can't believe anything comes out of their mouth. All uh, the nuclear professionals are hid away in uh, dark corners for quite a few years. And we're stuck with Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and a few of the other head bangers for the industry, the bootlickers, the cheerleading lap dogs, the cuckoos, the crazies, who uh, always equate uh, potassium-40 products with man-made radioactive isotopes, and they're completely different. So a banana, if you ate a banana and that insignificant, and I have to apologize all the time, of potassium-40 that's in it, you would off-gas that because your body can't hold any more potassium-40. But if that banana had a uh, emitter, just even a becquel a second of cesium or strontium or anything else, then you would ingest that. That would sequester into your body, into your organs, into your blood, into your bones, into your brain. And uh, your body will attack it and create tumors, cancer tumors. And your body will attack it nonstop because it's putting out energy nonstop. And so you'll be weak, more lethargic. You'll have uh, problems concentrating. You'll be tired. And if you, uh, and you most likely did, right through North America, it was a massive radioactive fallout from the tree. Melted, exploded, detonated hydrogen. Uh, explosions. One, uh, number three, was MOX fuel. It had a nuclear detonation, not an ex or not an explosion per se, like you know, a nuclear bomb goes off, but very similar. In fact, uh, the shock wave was felt 25 kilometers away by Associate Press reporter who reported on it. it you know, it's an amazing explosion, right? That was because of a criticality. And now number four at Fukushima, uh, was these are all 10-story buildings. Number three is missing. Number one, it blew his top. Number two still has his top, but it's 100% meltdown. 
and the poles are destroyed and they have melted and lost their zirconian uh, claddings which are very toxic carcinogenic and this was all aerosoled and released and people say you know Dana you don't have to worry about it it's 5,000 miles away well the jet streams at 100 miles an hour in 24 hours is 2400 miles and so it's um, it's reprehensible that anybody you know of caliber would say that that's not an issue when it's common knowledge that the Asian Pacific pollution studies and academics and peer review journals show that automobile pollutions, great big particles, make their way across the Pacific in a few days when the weather is right, when they get blown out of the cities and they contribute to American pollution. And so it was, it's not a far stretch to start looking and seeing what, how particles one, one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter is much tardier and so and by proxy is much more easier to come across the ocean. And we have a, a big record of that in North America, in Canada. We've seen uh, the reports from Health Canada of iodine at 130, iodine 131. Now, at 300 times a background level, now a background level that they talk about is actually potassium 40 and around 7,500 becquels. And so that's 2.5 million becquels, 300 times background. But see, there is no normal background level for man-made radioactive isotopes. It's an addition. It's something new that didn't exist before that has been added in. And it's not, there shouldn't be a single becquel added onto it. If there is, it's completely unacceptable. And the apologist, the nuclear apologist in particular, will always try to marginalize this because they got a pension depends upon it and their future and everything else. And all the lies they told to their families and their loved ones and their friends and the interviews they gave and uh, students and everything else that they've lied to all their life is coming back to roost, is coming back to haunt them. And so they're not going to give it up very easy. And we got an issue. We can't, our planet cannot sustain what is happening to us. It can't sustain what happened to us. Uh, the, the litany in the history of uh, radioactive man made ionized materials is mind boggling. It's atrocious. It's shocking. It's embarrassing. You know, if there is <laughs> intelligent life in space, it's, it's fucking gone the other way. Our DNA is not even DNA anymore because we have been up uh, in updated with so much toxins in our lifetime. Not to mention the GMO. It's so bad. You have to find organic. You have to learn, and which is bizarre because everything used to be organic. When I was growing up, there was none of this. And now it's hell on earth. I've never, not even my wildest dreams, not even... In the craziest cartoon book when I was growing up was a society like this projected where we were so stupid we boxed ourselves in with this nuclear nightmare that we can't shut off we can't shut the fucking stuff off and this is a, a frightening reality that we better get our acts together we better put it in gear we haven't got time to play games anymore this is definitely too much. It's hemorrhaging every day like St. Paddy's Day. You have to think of it that way. What's going to fucking happen? If the mile, if a river was four or five thousand miles long and you filled it up all day every day with dye and never stopped for three and a half years, what the frig do you think is going to happen when you do that with radioactive material to an ocean? The radioactive material that's coming out will go right around the ocean and right back to Japan. It won't lose its energy. It's not salutable. They like to pick and choose and manipulate you and deceive you. And that's what they're good at for 70 years. Telling you about bananas. Telling you about drinking water. Radiation is everywhere. When that has nothing to do with ra man-made radioactive materials. Wasn't everywhere. It was only because they would lie and continue to lie about every aspect of it. That the bottom hasn't fell out of it yet. It's an abomination. 
upon our planet. It's 100% of the misery on our planet. Once again, you know, there's 7,500 communities evacuated in Russia, 9,000 square miles, because of a nuclear accident. That's, but it keeps getting wider every year. And that has happened all over our planet. You know, Sellafield, England, is hemorrhaging into our ocean, to the Atlantic Ocean, at 8 million liters a day from a MOX production facility in Sellafield. We have uh, 2.5 million rounds of uranium-238 in Iraq for nine years. Dirty bombs, 2.5 million a month, 5 million rounds a month to get 11,000 Taliban. Does that, you know, even just at one month, does that sound logical? 2.5 million rounds, or 5 million rounds, half of them are uranium-238 that are supposed to be in a sarcophagus till the end of time. That if you took one of those bullets, or the so-called terrorists took one of those bullets and went into your city, that's, that's what they call a dirty bomb. That's worse than a dirty bomb because it's uranium-238. And it's ionized. It went through the chain reaction. And this planet cannot sustain this stuff. This stuff is annihilistic. It's destroying the very foundation of life on this planet. And we can't hide away from this. We can't just close our eyes and pretend that nothing is going to, everything is going to work out good. You can pray for 5,000 years for somebody else to fix that problem, and it's never going to happen. It'll be too late. It's too late now for most aspects. It's definitely too late to try to save the Pacific Ocean. How can you ever save something with so much radiation released into it? And that's going to hemorrhage out and has hemorrhaged out into other oceans and is because the oceans are connected. But there is natural, you know, what I call a natural barrier that slows down. But it, it will reach every nook and cranny of this friggin' planet, and it ain't stopping. Nobody's trying to stop it. We have the homeless working there. In Chernobyl, was one-third the size of any of the melted reactors at Fukushima. One-third the size. It was a 30% meltdown. Fukushima is three 100% meltdowns. And they're out there lying in the media saying Chernobyl is the worst accident. One third the size, a 30% meltdown versus three 100% meltdowns. And a detonation in a spent fuel pool at building four of the most toxic stuff on this planet. I mean, we, we've had our shares of, uh, of, of problems on this planet, but we don't even... There, there is no precedence for what we have done. There's no little black book saying, oh, okay, we got this much radioactive material. It's, a, it's something that never stops uh, destroying life on Earth. Because no life on Earth, no, no life on Earth is acclimated to man-made radiation and will never be. It took us billions of years to be genetically superiorly selected species to exist perfectly in harmony with all the radon gas on this planet, with all the potassium-40 on this planet, with, you know, with the environment of the planet itself. We are conditioned, right? Radon is not a problem to us. We are acclimated to that, same as we are to the potassium-40. It's irrelevant, but it's used, it's used to uh, deceive people and to you know, acclimate them into the nuclear industry's uh, lies, constant lies. I mean, why can't they tell us the truth that a banana truly has nothing to do with radioactive fallout or radioactive waste? Look at Whip. Whip had a truck fire and couldn't go back down in the mine for nine days. This huge, massive, inconceivably big mine. Unimaginably big. And because they had a little truck fire down there, they can never go back in there again. And then nine days later, no one has ever went down to that mine. Then they have a radiation release, they say. Right out of the blue. Well, how would they know? No one's been down since the truck fire. Well, there was no truck fire. There was a radiation release, see? 
and they had to lie to you. And then that means your children didn't stay indoors during the dangerous period when the heavy stuff come through. They never even told you when that happened. It only came out later, several days later, that there was an incident there. And then they come out and said, oh, it was just a truck fire, but never bother explaining why they couldn't go back down in the great, big, huge, massive mind. Anywhere in that mind, not even into the buildings on the surface attached to the mines because of a truck fire? No, obviously not. It was because of a radioactive nightmare. And what did they expect when you put all your radioactive material in a hole in the ground and you have an incident? You're fucked. You can't get back in there. Um, the flu and stuffed up and everything here tonight. But once again, it's not the stream that I wanted to do tonight. It's just a short stream. I'm giving it up almost pronto here right now. Crash and burn. I'll get up tomorrow and you'll see some tests show up. And I'll be trying to log on and get on. And, you know, do a little short stream tomorrow sometime and get the kinks out of it so I can do a proper one from here on out. Uh, this is great, you know. It's unbelievable cool. I got everything done, but I can't get it to, to sync up with uh, YouTube. And so I'm not sure what that's all about. I think it might have to do with the browser. I think it only wants to use Safari. And so I'll update the Safari tomorrow, hopefully, and... Uh, that's going to change the game for you guys a lot. Really entertaining. I got all the bootlickers in there. Already imported in, right, you know. I licked my iPhone charger routine. I got all that imported in there. It's awesome. It's going to be so awesome. And so I got music imported in there. We got lots and lots of videos. And the studies, you know, the models and all this. The videos of them imported in. And it's... Uh, there was no lagging, no nothing. It was really good audios. And like I say, once again, you know, if once I figure it out over the next few days, I'll have a virtual uh, green screen. And so I'm not going to get moving stuff behind me, uh, uh, but I can have pictures and change the pictures behind me. That's, that was the intention of getting all of this stuff. And, um, you know, J Japan... Never had control. It doesn't have control right now. It's never going to have control. It's not even trying to get control. You know, at Fukushima, they had or Chernobyl they brought in six or conscripted six hundred thousand soldiers. They got medals for working on Chernobyl. One third the size, thirty percent meltdown. At Fukushima, three times the size, three one hundred percent meltdowns, and they they got the homeless or can't read or write. We we're in a lot of trouble. See. You know what I mean? We're in a lot of trouble and no one wants to fess up to it. No one wants to do nothing about it. No one wants to put any pressure on the system to stop lying and start coming up with solutions. The solution to these folks is to come out and lie and equate the man-made radioactive materials with insignificant, normal, everyday, indigenous background radiation like bananas or that's in your clothing, that is homeostasis that you off gas that is regulated in your body like a thermostat like a cruise control on a car regulates the speed your potassium 40 in your body is regulated you can't have any more in your body and every friggin one of them for three years now equates the radiation from the ionized man-made radioactive material as insignificant billion year old normal harmless one thousandth of a second lifespan potassium 40 and deludes the truth right that's all he, the only thing gets diluted is the truth you can't dilute a radioactive material uh, it's not normal on this planet you won't find it on the moon you won't find it in the Milky Way element periodic tables it's not supposed to be on this planet we, we need to stop no matter how much money you make and no matter how much money you're pouring into it it ain't going to change anything, only make it a lot worse. The longer you're doing it, the worse it gets. You can't decommission a nuclear power plant. you got three square miles. Three square miles. There is enough on this planet, or Americans alone, radioactive waste from the chain reaction to cover West Virginia, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Hawaii, New Hampshire, Delaware, and Vermont in one inch of radioactive material. 
you would cook. It would cook you. It would fry you like a chicken in the fucking oven. And they got nowhere to put it. They don't know what to do with it. It's extraordinary toxics and it's killing everything on this planet. And they're not trying to do anything with it. Their solution is put it in a hole and everybody runs away at whip and no Maggie call. Carol's bad. And it, like once again, you know, it's untenable. We can't keep another second of doing this. It's irrelevant. It's stupid. It's 100% of the issue on the planet. Firing 2.5 million rounds a month into poor people's countries. You sick and demented, twisted, gross, disgusting mon monsters. You, you know, only a monster could do something like that. You fired in other people's country, but you say they're going to get one and throw it in your country. You throw 2.5 million rounds of this stuff in their country every month. Dirty bombs. Prince Harry's up there flying around shooting dirty bombs out of those helicopters. The A-10 Warthog, your rah, 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 shoots a ton and a half of uranium-238. A minute. That's 71 Nagasaki bombs, the animosity equivalent of radiation. How the fuck can you keep doing this? How come you can't... You know, I know, I understand why. It's because of all, all the lies you get from all the, the professionals, all the experts. They're all, all lawyers. You can't trust a single friggin' soul out there. It's heartbreaking. It truly is. It's disturbing. And, you know, I just... I'll end it on this that... Right now I'm going through Harvard and Yale and Oxford, and Berkeley, and Stanford, and, uh, you know, uh, a whole bunch of these, the best institutions on the planet. And I'm going through March 2011, and I'm reading it, and I'm getting their one-hour lectures and presentations about Fukushima, and the audience is full of community members that are worried sick that went to these institutions, and they sat there on the stage and lied to them. It's unimaginable. They had all the guests, and they were, that's the only time I've ever seen in all the interviews out there, nuclear experts, was that first couple of weeks. You won't see them after, they went into hibernation, because the sunlight will just destroy them. They're ashamed of themselves. Hopefully they went and hung themselves. I'll help them if they like. We can do it over line. I got no problem with that at all. You were, if you were one of these apologists from the nuclear industry and you want to go kill yourself and you contact me and set up a webcam, I'll watch you. I won't interfere. I'll tell everybody you were sorry. You know, that's, that's the reality of it. That's going on out there. there. There is some remorse out there, but it's not good enough. There's so many people dependent every day on the nuclear uh, welfare machine for a paycheck, and they're so stupid. They're so fucking stupid. They're so insignificant, and they won't give it up for anything. It's an easy... It's the only thing they can do is something stupid like that. They couldn't make a living doing anything else. They're the inbreeds that have infiltrated every aspect of our governments and industry and they feel like they're entitled and they want it all and they will fucking murder everything around them to keep their job they'll murder their own children their own friends their own families their own loved ones their own spouses their own nephews and aunts and uncles and cousins so they can get a fucking check it's shocking okay well i'll come in and say good night to everybody don't worry about me, folks. I've been at it all day. I'm just I'm really sore because I haven't stopped. Uh, but I'm determined to get it. And when I get it, you'll see a huge freaking smile on my face because I'm able to bring you a really cool presentation that you know, I was hoping to get tonight, but I wasn't sure I was going to get it. So, Hi, Janet. We destroy what you save. Cats alive. Everybody, we'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Half an hour show tonight. I'm down for the count. Yeah, the air I'm thirst. I'm just busted up today. It was a good day though. I got everything done except for connecting to YouTube. So that's 
All I got left to do now is make that connection and I can do the stream. And so we're just probably the morning or night after we'll have it. Yeah, I hear you, Mickey. You don't stop. Like all you folks, you know, you show up at all these streams and you say, Dan, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. I really don't, right? Uh, you know, bless you for what you're doing. I, I hear you where you're coming from. But I can't imagine, you know, so many of you people out there have caught almost all of these streams, if not all of these streams. Absolutely amazing. And, you know, that's the reality of it. In it, is that we, that's the only way we're going to get it done is we all band together and pull together and keep pushing back. And that's what we're doing. And there, and there is no switching us off. We're not going away. See, I got a rough haircut there tonight. Uh, okay. Good night, everybody. Round the flash. Fukushima and Revelations. Hi. Patrick, later side of genocide, checks and balances, strength, you know, Mike, Cats, Lloyd, Mervyn. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm definitely a bit run down. Nubu Magic. I get so smile when I see Nubu Magic. I know he's busy. He's doing his own thing. And he, showed up. he shows up every once in a while, and it's always fun for us. And we're happy to see him as much as you can find. You'll find links below to him. He's a blogger like myself, and he's been at it much longer on this particular subject um, and he's got a really big collection there and a great knowledge you know and he's just not he's not a screaming demon like me we're working on him but it's not necessary right you don't need that's why we need all that's why there's all those links below so there's all these different personalities all these different people all these different perspectives and you know I, I'm not gonna say I agree with everything down below but uh, it's important that you have both sides of that story so you can make up your own mind, All right? I can help you understand how the whole system works, but it's up to you ultimately to make up your own mind, to look yourself and to come to your own conclusions. I can help guide you on how the lies are told and then you can verify it and then you can, you know, by doing that you will work out 